Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. My name's Sybin, bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Now, before I begin this video, I just wanted to say that I'm back. I know I took a little bit of a break from my channel, but as many of you guys may know, me and my wife welcomed in our firstborn child just about three months ago. So, you know, there's been like a, a learning process on being new parents, as many of you would know. So in between bottle feedings and diaper changes and a screaming newborn, I haven't really had a lot of time to do recordings or research or writing or any of that stuff. And of course, me being the MTG nerd that I am, our daughter is named Liliana, which I think has lent to the more defiant nature of our daughter. Still, we're in a pretty good place right now, so I decided to get back on the horse and do some recordings of MTG lore. And just in time too, as Dominaria United is right on the horizon, and I'm sure it's going to bring a lot of great story with it. And of course, with us returning to Dominaria, we need to discuss the looming threat of the Phyrexians. But sometimes that threat can be a bit more subtle than an invading army. Of course, guys, if you're liking this video and what we do here on the Etherhub, please don't forget to hit that like button, become a subscriber, and checking out our Patreon, or becoming a member of the channel. You guys like this video enough, I'll even introduce you to Liliana herself, which, I gotta tell you guys, she's really adorable. And with all of your support, let's jump into the lore. The Phyrexians are forever tied to their past and present invasions of Dominaria. Though their primary military campaigns may be a bit more flashy and cinematic, with scores of Phyrexianized monsters flickering into existence and waging full-scale war, it's the more subtle aspects of their invasions that make them such a terrifying enemy. Today we will learn about one of their more insidious practices, and what we can expect from this tactic in Dominaria United. As the Art of War suggests, victorious warriors win first and then go to war. This means learning everything about your opponent before first blood is ever drawn. The Phyrexians do this on Dominaria with spies, turncoats, and the topic of today's video, sleeper agents. In Dominaria United, the card Evolved Sleeper was spoiled. It starts off as a human creature who, as more black mana is spent on it, slowly evolves into a 4-4 Phyrexian with Death Touch. Before we get into the lore, I just want to discuss how much I love this card design. I was a huge fan of the level up mechanic back in Rise of the Eldrazi, and I just really like the idea of creatures doing more after they've entered the battlefield, with them being just great mana sinks and limited if you just don't have anything else to do. Of course, Evolved Sleeper doesn't have level up, but its design is based on that and cards like Figure of Destiny and Ascendant Spirit from Kaldheim, both of which I love and used a lot of when I played their sets in Limited. So just off the bat, wanted to praise this card's design and implore wizards to please make more like it, or better yet, bring back level up for an entire set. It was a lot of fun. Now, let's return to the topic at hand, the Sleeper Agents of Phyrexia. As the name suggests, Sleeper Agents are those minions meant to infiltrate and sabotage a plane's defenses, weakening them before the main Phyrexian force attacks. This was also the case for those planted on Dominaria. However, the history of these agents didn't always have such a successful record. When Sleeper Agents were first implemented, they were imperfect experiments, small homunculi-like creatures they referred to as newts. They appear as hairless, androgynous humans, standing about as tall as a child. They're grown in flesh vats filled with Phyrexian oil, where chunks of organic meat, essentially, from other species are transformed into what is the first stage of a full-blooded Phyrexian. Before this process was perfected, these newts made up the main fodder of the Phyrexian army, sent in droves to conquer plains, where they were typically easily defeated by the native resistance they met. Clearly, Yogmoth and his followers were onto something with these newts, they just needed a little bit more tinkering. And after some painful trial and error, the completion process was introduced and it changed the face of the Phyrexian war machine. Literally. 
By introducing other genetic material, the Phyrexians found that they can change these newts into any other type of Phyrexian they wanted. Big, small, strong, magically inclined, it didn't matter. They were a blank canvas that the Phyrexians could use for anything. They could also completely customize the appearance of these newts. The Phyrexians taking the shape of any species or race across the multiverse. This little trick was the birth of the sleeper agents. Sleeper agents were special in that they weren't totally completed during their creation. Their minds were typically left uncorrupted, meaning that they could absorb the local cultures and become more convincing in their deceit. While they lived their lives seemingly as normal citizens, the touch of Phyrexia always remained, even without the knowledge of the agent themselves. Most acted simply as moving cameras or microphones, being the eyes and ears of Phyrexia on a plane. Others are programmed for more complex clandestine tasks, not only spying, but actively preparing the plane for the Phyrexian invasion, again without any knowledge of this foreign influence. Their tasks could include building receiving portals that would be used in the attack, or even assassinating important targets such as kings or commanders. The history of Phyrexian sleeper agents on Dominaria is dominated by two prominent characters in the lore, one who succeeded in their service to Yagmoth and another who fought against their creator. Carrick, known as the son of Yagmoth, started his life just as any other sleeper agent, born a newt and grown to impersonate humans on the plane of Dominaria, in order to prepare it for conquest. He accomplished this goal by befriending a young mage student of the Tolaria Academy named Joyra. Joyra is of course influential in the MTG story outside of her relationship with Carrick, who actually became her lover without her knowing he was a Phyrexian sleeper agent. Still, this connection gave Carrick access to the halls of Tolaria, where he stole blueprints along with other intel from none other than Urza, the biggest threat the Phyrexians faced on Dominaria. His true identity was only discovered by the artificial planeswalker Karn, who found Carrick suspicious after learning of his secret relationship with Joyra. Karn found concrete evidence of Carrick's true identity as a sleeper agent when he traveled back in time and tracked Carrick to a secret meeting with his Phyrexian handlers in the woods. When Karn returned to the present, however, it was too late, as the Carrick-led Phyrexian forces laid siege to Teleria, with a negator even killing Joyra. With the Academy falling quickly to the surprise attack, Urza again sent Karn to the past to try to prevent this assault. Though this final jump was enough to stress the time machine, and it ended up exploding. This catastrophe, which ended up blowing up Teleria, did have the added consequence of saving Joyra's life, but it also trapped Carrick in a quick time bubble, a space that had accelerated time. Within the fast time rift, Carrick built an army and a fortress to once again attack Tolaria, only to be stopped again by the combined might of Urza, Multani, and Baron, resulting in Carrick's death. The most famous sleeper agent in MTG, especially pertaining to Dominaria, is the rebellious Phyrexian Zansha. This sleeper agent, while born like the rest within the horrid Fane of Flesh, the fourth sphere of Phyrexia, Zansha was overseen by the powerful Praetor Gix, who looked to distinguish himself in the eyes of Yagmoth with his loyal army of sleeper agents. However, Zansha was born with a dangerous defect, free will. While the other newts' minds were fully tied to the whims of Yagmoth, Zansha was truly free of any mental corruption. Thinking for herself meant that she was no use to the Phyrexians, and was said to be executed. Her story would have ended right there and then, if not for the interference of Urza. The Planeswalker was looking for a way to find Phyrexia in the multiverse, and this seemingly human Phyrexian could be the key in his war against this enemy. With the help of Zansha, Urza gained first-hand combat experience on Phyrexia itself, but was woefully unprepared for the horrors he faced there. Even with Zancha acting as a guide, the Planeswalker could not push through to the Phyrexian heart, and was forced to retreat before becoming overwhelmed. Though many were rightfully suspicious of this reformed sleeper agent, Zancha always stood against her Phyrexian creators, even making the ultimate sacrifice for her adopted home of Dominaria. She tracked down other sleeper agents who had infiltrated cities across the plain and started wars between nations, which certainly weakened the defenses of the plain. Zanja discovered that her former commander, Gix, was responsible for this plot, 
and faced the Praetor along with her friend Urza. In a head-to-head -head fight, Gix and Urza seemed evenly matched, until the Praetor started to gain the upper hand. With each blow, Zancha saw the potential savior of Dominaria weaken and retreat. If he should fall, there would be no true force who could stop the armies of Phyrexia from conquering the plain. The slim chance of Dominaria's survival lay with Urza. Knowing this, Zanja jumped into the fight to act as a distraction to Gix. This gambit paid off. Though it claimed Zanja's life, the momentary lack of focus gave Urza an opportunity to strike, ending the threat Gix posed on Dominaria. Zanja would die in this solemn crypt, but her legacy and service to Dominaria was not yet over. Urza, never wanting to waste any valuable materials even when he prized them from a dead friend, extracted Zancha's Phyrexian Heartstone, a powerful core of energy implanted during the completion process that acted as Zancha's personality. It was this Heartstone that Urza used as the primary engine for the artificial planeswalker Karn. So in a sense, Zancha still lives on, carried in the personality of Karn the Silver Golem. Sleeper Agents are one of the most effective means Phyrexia has at weakening the foundation of Dominaria. As they ramp up their preparations for their invasion, New Phyrexia again implements this tactic. In the upcoming story of Dominaria United, there may be times that our heroes will need to seek out and stop the plots of these bad actors. But how? How can one identify a Sleeper Agent from any other citizen of Dominaria? Well, Zancha also helped in solving this little problem during her story, finding that newts that become sleeper agents were susceptible to a high frequency sound, a pitch that normal humanoids didn't pick up on. She and Urza created artifacts known as screaming spiders and used them to identify other sleeper agents that were disrupting Dominaria. If Karn can again make these screaming spiders, we may just have a chance at stopping these sleeper agents before they act. Or maybe, they'll suddenly work towards the utter end of Dominaria without a soul ever knowing they were here at all.